In this video, we're going to begin thinking about uh, how chemists deal with uh, dealing with atoms being so small when they come to do chemical uh, reactions. So how do chemists actually deal with the fact that atoms are so small? Well, the only way that we can uh, have reasonable numbers when we're dealing with atoms and uh, trying to work out how much of each reactant we need is to use a relative scale. So, it's maybe uh, one way of explaining this is if I had a, a piece of chocolate, um, just one piece of chocolate like that, and I say that has a mass of one. Now, if I then um, divided that piece of chocolate into half, that would have a relative mass of 0 0.5. And if I was lucky enough to have uh, two pieces, then that would have a relative mass of two. So, by giving that middle piece of chocolate a mass of one, I can compare the mass of the other two pieces uh, by just uh, a, a relative scale. Now, because it's relative, there aren't any units. Um, all I'm saying is if uh, the middle piece has a mass of 1, relative to that, the uh, mass of the uh, double piece of chocolate is 2, and the mass of the piece that we cut in half is 0.5. Now notice I'm not using grams or, or any, any type of unit when I describe that um, because we're just talking about uh, relative uh, masses. So in a similar way, we can talk about atoms. So if I picked an atom and I just said, OK, that atom has got a mass of 1. Relative to that atom, if I've got uh, an atom which has half the mass, then it is going to have a mass of 0 0.5. And if I have an atom which is double the size, um, then it'll have a mass of 2. So again, I'm not using any uh, type of unit there. This is purely a scale in which we are comparing the different sizes, uh, different masses of the atom that I have. So now let's try and put this into uh, practice and think about doing a reaction. So I'm going to do a reaction between uh, these two uh, atoms. So I'm going to have an orange atom and I'm going to have a purple atom. So you may remember uh, from the previous page, the uh, a orange atom has got a relative mass of 1 and the purple atom has got a relative mass of 2. So how much do I need to weigh out of each? Well, let's say I'm going to start off uh, with the purple atom and I'm going to start off with 20 grams of the purple atom. That means I only need 10 grams of the orange atom to react with the purple atoms completely because the orange atoms have half the mass um, and that would mean that I would produce a molecule which would have a relative mass of 3 um, because we, as you know, we can't uh, create or destroy matter in chemistry and therefore uh, that would have a mass of 30 grams. So as you remember, we said we, all st we started with the orange atom and we said that's relative mass of 1 and we're comparing all the other atoms uh, against that one. And because my purple atom is double the size, that means to have the same number of atoms, I only need half the mass of orange atoms. Uh, so let's have a look at that and think of it in terms of uh, chocolate now. So we said that uh, that was my starting piece of chocolate and I'm going to compare everything against that. Um, so that means that the... Uh, the uh, relative mass of 2 means I've got two chunks, like so, um, and they're going to combine together to give me a molecule, a chocolatey molecule, where I have combined those pieces of chocolate together, like so. Um, and you can see that uh, for that to work, I only need half the mass of the orange atoms uh, compared to the purple atoms. So using our idea of representing atoms with pieces of chocolate, Let's think a little bit more about uh, the reaction we just looked at. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, show you what would happen if I decided to not follow those rules. So let's say instead of deciding to um, have using just 10 grams of that first piece of chocolate, I decided to use 20 grams uh, as I've shown below there. So here I have my 20 grams of uh, reactant, let's call that reactant A. And I'm still going to use my 20 grams of reactant B there. So when I react those together, what will happen? Well, you can see the product that I make up on the top uh, here. Um, that's what it's going to look like. So let's uh, get uh, that uh, displayed on the right-hand side there. 
Um, so that's what I, I've made, where I've combined 1A with 1B to give me uh, this product here. But you can see I've got this piece of chocolate left over uh, because for this reaction to uh, work, I only need those uh, pieces of chocolate. This one is left over. Um, and therefore this part would be uh, wasted um, because it hasn't reacted to form the product that I need. And so that's why it's really important that we do uh, use the correct amount and we do think about the mass of each reactant that I need, otherwise you're going to waste a lot of chemicals. So let's have a look at another example, and this time I'm going to react uh, atoms B and C together. So B, we know, has got a relative mass of 2, um, and C has got a relative mass of 0.5, and they're going to combine together to give me the molecule on the right-hand side there. So, um, first of all, what will be the relative mass of the product? Well, it's uh, B and C combined, so we'll have a relative mass of 2.5. Um, and so uh, we can think about that also in terms of pieces of chocolate as well. Um, so if we had, for example, um, these would be the relative uh, pieces of chocolate there. Um, we're going to have the half piece of chocolate for C, um, which is going to be uh, this one here. Um, and then you're going to have the uh, double piece for B there, and then this is the product I'm going to make, uh, which is C and B combined there. So let's have a look and think. put some masses on these now. So uh, I'm going to start with B, and again I'm going to start with 20 grams of B. So relative to that, relative to my 20 grams of B, how much C am I going to now need to uh, measure out? Well, it's um, going to be a quarter of that. So for, for C, I only need to weigh out 5 grams of C, um, and that would give me 25 grams of my product. So the proper name for this relative scale for atoms is, funnily enough, relative atomic mass. Now this has got quite an uh, in-depth definition, which we're not going to go to, uh, into too much detail um, at the moment, but when you do start your A-level course, uh, you will find a more uh, complicated definition, but let's not worry about that. Uh, but the way that we define this relative atomic mass is we actually take the carbon atom and we take the carbon uh, isotope 12. So that has got uh, six protons and six neutrons uh, for it to be that isotope, um, because remember we use that, that 12 refers to the mass number. Um, so that's uh, isotope carbon 12, and we compare all the other atoms against the mass of that one and we say that atom of carbon-12 has a mass of 12 atomic mass units. So uh, you don't, don't worry too much about this but basically what happened is let's say chemists all got together and say right an atom of carbon-12 is going to have a mass of 12 and we're going to compare everything else against that. So let's go back now to my original atoms and we said we, we actually started with the orange atom and gave that a mass of one and compared the other two against that. Well, we're going to say that mass uh, is now going to be carbon-12. So that atom, rather than have a mass of one, is going to now have a mass of 12. That's now a carbon-12 atom, which means that uh, what would be the mass of my red atom now? Well, it's half the mass of my orange, so that's going to have a mass of six. And the mass of my purple uh, atom, which is double, is going to be a mass of 24. So that makes our life as chemists much easier uh, because uh, we can just use these relative masses to work out how much we need. So that deals with atoms quite effectively. So how do we deal with uh, compounds and molecules or, or, or larger particles? Well, all we have to do is add up the relative atomic masses of all the atoms in that particle and that will give us the mass, the relative mass of that, again compared to an atom of carbon-12. So let's have a look at some examples of that. Now, if you need to find any of these relative masses of the different atoms, these are all, dis are all displayed in your periodic table. So uh, you may have noticed uh, for each of your atoms in your periodic table, there are in fact two numbers. Uh, so let's have a look at uh, aluminium there, for example. Uh, aluminium has got uh, the top number of 13 and the bottom number there of 27. Um, and if you have a look at the key, the 13 relates to the atomic number that's the number of protons, and the 27 refers to its relative atomic mass. 
So if you ever need to find a relative atomic mass, uh, they're always in a periodic table. So how do we work out um, these more complicated uh, relative masses? Uh, relative atomic mass is very easy, you just look up in the periodic table. Um, how about uh, for molecules? Well, uh, as I say, all we have to do is add up the um, different uh, relative atomic masses. So uh, let's have a go at the first example there, and that is going to be water. So hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of 1, and oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 6. I've got two hydrogens in there, uh, so that's 2 times 1 plus 16 to give me 18. Uh, carbon dioxide has a relative atomic mass of 12, and oxygen is 16. So in order to work that out, it's going to be 12 for the carbon plus 2 times 16 to give me 44. Uh, ammonia, uh, nitrogen has got a relative mass of 14. Hydrogen, as we've said, is still 1. So 14 plus 3 gives me 17. Um, that next little molecule there is actually ethanol. So ethanol has got two carbons, then five hydrogens, uh, then an oxygen, which is 16, and then another hydrogen of 1 to give me 46. Uh, uh, next one is calcium nitrate, um, so calcium is 40, um, the other atoms we've already looked up at the periodic table, uh, nitrogen is 14 and oxygen is 16. Uh, the thing you just have to be careful of is you notice the NO3 is in a bracket there, so I have got uh, three oxygens and a nitrogen inside that bracket, so when I multiply both of those by two, that means I've got two nitrogens and six oxygens. And my final one, calcium hydroxide. Uh, so for that one, I've got another calcium, uh, 40. And then I've got two oxygens and two hydrogens there to give me a grand total of 74. So in order to use our relative atomic mass um, properly, um, relative um, molecular mass, etc., we need to define one more term, and that's called the mole, which is a little bit, uh, uh, does confuse people, I think because of the name, we're not referring to little furry creatures anymore. Um, the mole is actually given um, quite a specific definition in chemistry. Before, before getting into a definition of the mole, uh, the mole is just a number. So I will bring up the definition now, um, but it is effectively just a number, and it's a very big number. Um, and it is just uh, comparing atoms, molecules, um, everything equally. Um, and so uh, to give it its proper definition, it's the amount of a substance um, which contains the same number of particles as there are carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. So we know that in 12 grams of carbon-12, there are in fact 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon in there. Um, and then I can therefore have a mole of anything. So if I was to say to you, I've got a mole of uh, silicon atoms, you would know that I have got 6.02 times 10 to the 23 silicon atoms. Um, if I had a mole of Mars bars, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 Mars bars. Um, now, obviously, it wouldn't work for that. Uh, you'd never have that number of Mars bars. Um, but the reason it works for atoms is because they are so, so small. And we need to use those num that number to be working in reasonable quantities. Now, that number, 6.02 times 10 to 23, is known as Avogadro's constant um, after the scientists that uh, discovered it. So uh, there's one more definition uh, for us to just think about, and that is molar mass. Uh, the molar mass is just the mass in grams of one mole of a substance. Um, now don't worry too much about that. Um, what is far more important is that you can use uh, the mole effectively. Um, so how does this help us? Uh, well, the relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass tells us how much of a substance we need to weigh out in grams to obtain one mole of it. So if I want one mole of carbon, 12, I would weigh out 12 grams of it. And so because that's our definition, I know that uh, I can weigh out uh, the, the uh, relative atomic mass of any uh, element, and that would give me a mole of atoms of it. So here on the left-hand side, I have got my 12 grams of carbon-12, and we know that contains all those carbon atoms. So if I was then to uh, decide uh, to get a mole of something else, so let's say I said I need a mole of water molecules, um, so that's 6.02 times 10 to the molecules, water molecules, I would weigh out 18 grams of it. Uh, the relative top mass of water is 1, 
and oxygen is 16. So two hydrogens comes to two, plus 16 gives me 18, so that's 18 grams of it. So if I wanted a mole of copper atoms, um, the relative atomic mass of copper, if you look at your periodic table, is 63.5. So if I weigh out, weigh out 63.5 grams of copper, I know that I've got 6.02 times 10 to 23 copper atoms. You can, in fact, have a mole of anything you want. Um, it's just a number. It's a very big number. It's six. Um, it's basically six followed by 23 zeros. So it's a huge number, but you can have a mole of anything like. You could have a mole of uh, spoons. You could have a mole of houses. You could have a mole of people. doesn't matter. It would just be if I said I've got a mole of, um, let's say, Smarties, it would mean I've got 6 times 10 to 23 Smarties. Um, it doesn't matter what it is, it's just, just a number. So don't worry about uh, the what it's called. Um, when, you, when you think about what is a mole, it's just a very big number. And if I weigh out uh, the relative atomic mass of something or the relative molecular mass of something, I have that number of particles. So if I fancied, I could decide that I am going to uh, have my own definition. And let's say I'm going to say I'm going to define an otter. And the otter is a number of particles in 10 grams of B. Uh, so that's my piece of chocolate B, and that's got a relative mass of 1. Uh, so I'm going to weigh out that, uh, find the mass of that, and I find that when I have, uh, when I weigh out uh, 10 grams of B, um, I have got 5 pieces of B. So now I'm just going to compare everything against that. So I would now like an otter of uh, the other pieces of chocolate. So I would like an otter of A and an otter of C. So remember an otter is five pieces. So an otter of A um, is going to be five pieces of A and that would be five grams because a piece of A weighs half a piece of B. And then finally an otter of C again would be five pieces of C but I would need to weigh out 20 grams. Each of those boxes have got five pieces of chocolate in it. Um, but I need only to weigh out 5 grams to get 5 uh, pieces of A because they're much smaller, 10 grams of B because they're double the size, and 20 grams of C because they're double the size of B. But the key thing to know that each of those contains 5 separate pieces of chocolate. It's just they're different sizes. So there are a few equations that you need to remember um, in order to use uh, the mole correctly. Um, so let's say if I wanted to work out the number of moles of atoms I have in uh, a gram of carbon, for example, uh, the way I work that out is I put my, it's a mass of, that I have in grams divided by the relative atomic mass. Um, so let's have a look at some examples of that. Let's say I've got 16 grams of phosphorus and I want to know how many moles I have of phosphorus. Well, the way I do it is I go to my periodic table and I look up the relative atomic mass of phosphorus. And if you do that, you will find the relative atomic mass of phosphorus is actually 31. So I put my mass in grams of phosphorus that I have of 16, divide that by my 31 for the relative atomic mass, and that means I've got uh, 0.52 moles of phosphorus. So I have about half a mole of phosphorus atoms in my 16 grams. So it works in exactly the same way for molecules and compounds. You just use relative molecular mass uh, rather than um, the relative atomic mass. Um, so uh, the first thing you need to do for each of these is work out the relative molecular mass, which I've done there. Um, so for NaNO3 is 85, CaCl2 is 111, uh, Ca um, nitrate twice is 164, Ammonium sulfate is 132, um, potassium uh, iodate is 214, and sodium chlorate is 74.5. So I've done all of that. Um, I know the mass um, because they've told me that. So then I just take the mass and divide that by the relative molecular mass, which we've done there. And when you work that out, you will find those are the number of moles that you have. Um, so uh, you've got 0.0459, uh, 0 0.001, 0 0.25, 0 0.104, 0 0.05 and 1.34 moles um, respectively. Um, so uh, quite straightforward, but those uh, equations you do need to know, uh, you will use them a lot at A-level. 
So you can of course rearrange that equation to find the mass in grams. So if I wanted to go the other way, I know the number of moles I have, or I want, and I need to work out what mass that is, um, I uh, just rearrange it to give me that equation there. So again, the first thing I'm going to do is work out the relative molecular mass of each, um, which uh, we have there. I've used the same ones as before to make life a little bit easier. Um, and then rather than uh, divide now, you're going to times uh, because you know the number of moles and that's times the relative molecular mass and you do that to get those answers and the answers are all in grams. So that's our first video on an introduction to the mole and calculations in chemistry. Our next video uh, we will be looking at how we deal with gases. Um, so uh, I'll see you um, virtually uh, in the next video uh, which will be coming up shortly.